For nearly 400 years, the British royal family has reigned over Barbados. But next week, the island will replace Queen Elizabeth with the president. If you're a patriot, if you love your country, you have to be excited. To actually say the words, the president of Barbados. Like, who doesn't want to be a president of a country? My family is British and Barbadian, so they have some big questions about it all. Changes is good. It can't stay the same all the time. I don't accept it. I don't accept it. The legacy of slavery and colonial rule means some are keen to move on from the past. They had to bow before they got paid. Yeah, 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 you're bold and scraped. It was a feudal system. Daniel, you must compose yourself. You look as though you're ready to cry. And now the politicians have had their say, I'm here to ask Barbadians what it means. And why now? Some people would say that, why should we have an allegiance to the UK when, in our hour of need, they're not there for us? Barbados. A tiny paradise island in the blue-green waters of the Caribbean. On November 30th, this Commonwealth nation will remove the Queen as its head of state and become the world's newest republic. The decision was made without a referendum. Barbados declared independence from Britain in 1966, but now the government said it's time for Barbados to finally leave its colonial past behind. Current Governor-General Sandra Mason will become its first president. The mantle of leadership falls fully to the post-independence generations of Barbadians. It is those generations who must now define how our country and citizens will dominate the world stage, create a new vision, and build Barbados' future. Barbados to me is where my story begins. I was born in Britain. My grandparents are from here. It's happy memories. It's the rum shops, it's the people. But everything that my grandparents showed me when I was growing up seems to be changing. My granddad's story is typical of many Barbadians, or Bajans as we're known. He moved to England as a young man, hoping to better himself. But what I didn't know is, before he did, he worked on a sugar plantation. So this lane might not look like much, but it's special because we're walking in my granddad's footsteps and just around the corner is something that ties together the Queen, Britain and my family. This is the Bell Plantation. At its peak, nearly 300 slaves were forced to live and work here. After slavery was abolished, it was bought by the Lascelles family, who were close relatives of the Queen. She came to visit this place on her last trip 55 years ago. Hello. Hi. Good to see Daniel. you. How are you doing, my Good brother? Good to see you. Give me an elbow bump. <laughs> uh, Good to see you. So this is, this is the Bell plantation then. Sad to say, sad to say, but you know, it's faded glory. Trevor Marshall is a historian and a leading pro-republic campaigner. Daniel, you see this? Now this is where the bookkeeper, as it was called, this is where he or the manager paid the workers on Fridays. You know, the desk. From here? Yeah, the people lined up out here. <laughs> lined up out here like, <laughs> like if they come for a duel and they filed in and they got there and bowed, yes. They had to bow before they got paid? Yeah, 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 you bowed and scraped. It was, as I said, a feudal system. You know, I know that my granddad worked here yeah. at the sugar factory, the mm -hmm. Bell Plantation. Mm -hmm. You're saying that he would have had to come here mm -hmm. and bow his head before collecting? Not everybody was so deferential, but the average person, you know, it was ingrained in you from the time of slavery, cap in hand like the typical English laborer, yes, governor, and you know, you're doing me a favor, you're, you're paying me. Daniel, you're, you, 
you must compose yourself. You look as though you're ready to cry. Care for the holes here. And you not only care for this, but the ceiling. The ceiling is disintegrating. Can you imagine this in its spirit of glory? All of this. I mean, the, look at how many rooms. This was magnificent. So to see it degenerate to this point, it, it may sound strange. It may sound as though I am seized with that same kind of feudal deference. But we, we looked on the plantation great houses as symbols of the importance of Barbados. Do you think that those mixed feelings, do you think that we are seeing them as Barbados approaches becoming a republic? If we were to have a, a, a referendum now, 66% of Barbadians would not want the republic. You think? Yeah. As high as that? I can tell you, they don't know what it is. I, as a, as a historian, I'm called upon on a daily, nightly basis to explain to people and to calm their fears. Will the um, currency be devalued? Will we be able to travel to England again? Um, are we going to stop the Queen from coming here? The Queen and Prince Harry. Uh, what about Meghan? Um, are we going to become a rep banana republic? Will we be like Venezuela or Cuba? There's such a gap from the man that Trevor would have been talking about, who would have been working here, as my granddad was, to the man that I knew who made a family in Britain and then came back to Barbados and made his life. The fact that that's part of his story means it's part of mine. And I'm, being in this building, I'm finding that really difficult to comprehend, really. After he returned from London in 1984, he opened a rum shop. It used to be busy and full of life. This, this picture here, I think, really captures their essence. You've got Nan on one side, arm around me, protective. You've got Grandad on the left, chest out, back straight, and then me in the middle, of course. He was never shy of an opinion, he, he knew what he thought. He liked, to, he liked to have a talk, he liked to debate. You know, with all of these changes in Barbados, I know he would have had something to say about it. And, you know, it's just, it's just sad that you can't talk to him now. My granddad passed away 14 years ago, but I still have family here who knew him well. So we're just around the corner from my auntie Marjorie and uncle Noel. They were really close with my granddad and my nan. So if anyone's going to know anything about what they would have made of this, it's them. So it's a good place to start, I think. Hello. Uncle. Oh, cool. Long time, no, mate. Oh, cool. Long time, long time, good time. to see you. You there, Auntie? <laughs> Hi, dear. I've got a little flowers for you there. Thank you. You know, you know, I've got the mask on. I, I jabble jab now. Do you know what I mean? I, I double jab, they test me, I'm fine. They were supposed to come to my wedding this summer, but the pandemic meant they couldn't make it. You have your ups and downs, and you have to put them together. Life is not sweet with marriage. Mm. <laughs> it's true. I've got some pictures for you. Oh, I'd show you these. Yeah, that's just the closer one of Grandad there. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because like, Grandad always had something to say. But we had happy times and good together. I just love to know like, what, what he would have thought about it all. You know, all of these, all these changes. Changes is good. You can't stay the same all the time. Hmm. You've got to move on. You can't, you've got to move on. You can't stay the same all the time. I don't accept it. I don't accept it. I don't see the reason of having this big change and going independent because I don't know what it will be for. Because a lot of things, I, I hope that I don't stop, you know, with things from down there, you know. Because I have nothing in my business. 
So if any change go down, they could hamper me. All of my money is in England still. Our pensions and everything is still up in England. I have got the assurance the pension will still be the same. But things don't say the same. Things got to change. We change. We change this. Changes bring success sometimes. Well, she's, it, it was our queen and I accept it. But going properly, I don't think much of it. Generations of British influence have left quite a mark here. Road signs and institutions mimic their counterparts across the Atlantic. The national sport is cricket, played at the familiar sounding Kensington Oval in the capital, Bridgetown. Roland Butcher was born in Barbados and moved to England when he was 13. He became the country's first ever black test cricketer. The fellow wrote a poem to me, really outlining what a shame it was to have picked a black man for England and so forth and so forth. And the other one was for a West Indian fellow <coughs> who saw this selection as going back to the days of slavery, um, exploitation all over again. He's invited me for a knockabout on the beach. Yeah! Roland's debut was against the West Indies right here in Bridgetown in 1981. He played most of his career for Middlesex and even met the Duke of Edinburgh on more than one occasion. Roland, what do you think about the Republic? What the benefits of being a Republic? I don't know, but what I would say is that I think England as a country the question is, have they really done enough to stay in the game? Is it the sense for you that England, because of its more than 300 years in control of Barbados, ended up taking it for granted? I think what really was needed was for England to accept the Atlantic slave trade, accept that as something that happened, also accept that institutions and individuals in England benefited from it and I believe in the call for reparations. For me reparations would be the forgiveness of any debts that Barbados has, also the building of some schools. You know we have suffered you know in the last two years and we've been suffering in this region for quite a while but England really didn't do a great deal so other people came along and offered their help and obviously Barbados needed it. I think countries like China has been a lot more friendly to Barbados. I mean, lots of investment and loans, etc., etc. So some people would say that we don't. Why should we have an allegiance to the UK when, in our hour of need, they're not there for us? The government says nothing much will be different after next week. However, work on a new constitution is underway. And some of the island's public services, like the police, will also be renamed. One big visible change here is at the parliament. It's having the biggest renovation in its 130 year history. The timing is a coincidence. We are not leaving any stones unturned and we are making sure that this refurbishment is one of the most comprehensive that this building will get. Terrell is in charge of the work. It's the biggest project of his career. The ceiling had deteriorated to such a point that standing on the ground, you could not see it. We had severe termite infestation. Really? Um, we had some, some water damage. The very bones of this building reflect the country's links to Britain, from the stained glass to the way the main chamber is laid out. So we're in the House of Assembly, which is the lower house. Right, uh, right now, uh, obviously, everything is gone. <laughs> but what the Prime Minister would sit on this side of uh, the aisle, right. and the opposition would sit on the other side. The Speaker usually sits uh, directly in the middle. And uh, this is where all the great debates and stuff like that happens. Almost identical, really, to the UK Parliament, you know, yeah. the way that it's set up. It's really incredible walking around and seeing so many parts of 
the building that still look and feel British, given the Republic and its restoration. But at the same time, what's I think quite exciting if you're from Barbados is that this time it's by choice. And within sight of the Senate is the highest profile chain so far. Last year, to great fanfare, the statue of Lord Nelson was removed. It stood here for 200 years in the area that used to be called Trafalgar Square. Do you think that anything material will change on December 1st when everyone wakes up? To me, nothing will change for the average Barbadian. We will still be who we are. Uh, in terms of material stuff, well, we'll know that everything that is here, we own everything that is here, it is ours. Everything that we look forward to, we have to uh, put in place for ourselves. There's no more dependency. There's no more of this uh, looking to someone else. We are just going to be us. There are some people who say, well, Republic means we should tear down all remnants of the British and start from scratch. What do you think about that? When you leave home, do you discard your parents? You don't. What you do is that you set up a new house, but you still keep your parents. You understand their role, you understand their responsibilities. You understand where you came from. History is important. Your whole bloodline is important. In recent years, there's been an increased awareness of the civil rights of black people after a series of events made headlines around the world. In Britain, there was the Windrush scandal in 2018, when people who'd legally migrated there in the 1940s found they and their descendants being threatened with deportation. Some families, after a lifetime in the UK, suddenly felt unwelcome. Hey, I'm Paul. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the lift. Welcome to Barbados, man. Welcome to Barbados. <laughs> oh, good to see you, Denise. Denise and her husband, Paul, decided to leave London three years ago. They just bought a house here in Fortescue. You see all these like dead-end roads? They're just the cul-de-sacs that would eventually have the housing. OK, we're driving up towards the cliff edge. It's right. quite bumpy. <laughs> but uh, it'll be worth it when we get there. Look at the potential and it, the mystery of it. It's so beautiful and awesome. And we'll talk about that's nature, that's natural, right? And then you look across here to Fortescue. I mean, it's a very special spot. And it, it puts things into perspective in terms of life. It's home, it's, you get a sense of belonging mm -hmm. when you're here. Denise has set up her own nail bar. So have you got any Bajan nail specialities down there? Oh, well, um... Wow! That, that is... <laughs> that is very patriotic. <laughs> <laughs> Denise's mother spent most of her life in Britain. Her parents were part of the Wimrush generation who went over with the promise of work. But in 2001, she decided to return to the Caribbean. You know, Barbados is about to make this change, removing the Queen as, as head of state. What do you think about the decision? I don't have anything personally against the Queen and the royal family. I think they're lovely people, but I do believe it's the right time. A sense of identity, a true sense of belonging. You know, there's a lot of things that, that went on that I think to myself, why is it still an issue because you have a certain background or a certain culture that you're left to feel unwelcome? Obviously, in London, it's great, it's a cosmopolitan city, but there is still an element of you're not quite welcome. I mean, with Brexit, I think that was a straw that broke the camel's back for me. You know, it was almost like, yeah, if Brexit happens, we'll get our jobs back. If Brexit happens, the, you know, immigration and foreigners are out, you know, it, it was like that. I just think this is, it's probably, I'm hoping that it will be a good, yeah. good move. Before I leave Barbados, 
I've been invited to the Friday fish fry at the busy Oystens Market. I'm meeting some of my new friends here, Roland Butcher and the young cricketers from earlier. Hey, what's going on, fellas? Yeah. Time for food? Yeah. Any favourites? I, I truly believe that they're making a good decision, a good change. Personally, I'm, I'm actually excited about it as well. If you're a patriot, if you love your country, you have to be excited. You should be excited. To actually say the words, the president of Barbados. Like, who doesn't want to be a president of a country? The children have something to grow and aspire to be you now. I want to be the president of my own country. I mean, we've, again, like, we've been here a few days and it's, it's not often that I've come across people who are as excited about it as you, you two. It does feel like it could be a difference in generation, you know, in terms of perspective and who's excited about this and who's not. You're absolutely right. I think in terms of the older generation, they may be pretty well set in their ways. The way they came up, they came up with the Queen and all the trimmings that go with it. I think the younger people, like the guys here, they're the ones that need to be excited because it is their future, whether it's a good or bad future, it is their future. Can I just get a show of hands of how many of you are thinking about leaving Barbados to work somewhere else? Yeah, that's pretty much all, that's all of you. Um, with the Republic coming up, does that change those ambitions at all? If it does, put your hand up. If it doesn't, then leave them down. They may be excited about the change, but not enough to keep them living and working in Barbados. What the guys had to say really challenged my perspective on this whole Republic thing. I mean, who is it really for? Who's going to benefit? Is it going to stop young people wanting to leave the country in search for opportunities like my granddad had to do 55, 50 odd years ago? I set off to discover what the birth of a new republic means for Bajans, and I found a genuine desire for a new start here. If the move to republic can inspire the next generation to have confidence in the country's future, then who knows what Barbados can achieve.